Welcome and thanks for joining me for Pathfinder Kingmaker. We're uh, leaving this area for now. Last time we leveled up and we went and fought. It's called the Scythe Tree, I think. It was actually quite a bit easier than I was expecting it to be. We took the tree down pretty easily. I need to head back to Tuskdale and fix Lindsay's problem here with Death's Door. And then I think um, we're, yeah, we're quite a ways from home. We'll uh, maybe head to this mud bowl uh, to pick up some mushrooms that this witch is looking for. See how long one and a half days. We're almost to the end of the month. I wonder if we should just get back inside our kingdom border. If we can, we may not actually be able to. To check on things before we hit the end of the month. Um... Uh, We basically have to get here, unless there's somewhere closer down here, but we don't actually have a route. We should still be okay, I think. 29th, 30th. We're in the 11th month, so are there just 30 days? I think we'll be okay. I don't think we really have any other option at this point. Hopefully we don't miss out on something. This is going to take some time. Let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, I was going to adjust this. I feel like He's got a large person now, and I feel like that's going to be going on Amiri, generally. So let's do this. No stopping now. Got trolls. These trolls are a real problem. Does it matter? Stefano Mascani. Interesting. Stefano and a couple of bodyguards. Three bodyguards and four trolls. Let's get Jathal up here. Might as well throw these on too. Trying to see who was taking the hits there. I guess they were missing. They did four little damage. Okay, Ragongar. Come on up here. And let's mirror up. Enhance. Arcane Strike. And we need to remember too that he's got the true strike if we want to use that. And now he's also got color spray. Might come in handy.
Got one use of haste left. Let's put enlarge on Amiri since we're right here. And since that was our tentative plan. We could actually uh, do a channel here. Heal up Amiri a little bit if we wanted to. His other stuff is kind of used up. Let's just do that. I don't know if I looked at his... Right, he's got the, the critical cures over here we need to remember. Okay, Amiri. Uh, let's just move you up here. So, in the inspire now is believe. It's a move action now instead of standard action. She could do that. And then she could also do something else. Nice. I think let's actually just move up here. Bodyguards seem fairly tanky. Okay, we can get in here now, it looks like. Um, she could use the protection. Unworthy. Taking that one down. You gotta use some acid though, guys. Okay, Ragongar. Let's have you, uh. Don't put on True Strike. That does use one of our spells here. we can't attack. I thought we'd be able to still attack. But I guess not. Okay. Let's get paste going. That's probably what we should have had Ragongar do. Yeah. Repent. Okay, Mary, get in here. Nice. I need to have her try this vital strike sometime too, just to see how that works. Okay, Lindsay, move up here. Let's get on Aspect of the Falcon. Did I say Amiri? Lindsay?
Let's just charge over here. I'd like to keep Stefano alive if we can. Where is he? Okay, he's doing fine. Ragongar. We could send him up after that one. Let's just actually use frigid touch on this one. In general, we'll probably want to keep him near Jathal. He took that uh, defensive maneuvers. Is that what it was called? Look at that real fast. Uh, coordinated defense. Plus two competence to combat maneuver defense. It's not that big a deal with these trolls. Okay, so everybody's down but not out. You could probably fix that with fire orb. And these two. Yeah. Aram, I think you're good. Send Amiri after this branded troll. Gotta use acid, guys. <laughs> Stefano. That, that's it's a lot of damage, but it's not gonna not gonna help. You should be able to do it with this. Alright. Talk to Stefano Mosconi. You see Sir Stefano Moscone from Pitax. He looks reduced from when you first met him. Did we meet him back at the beginning? His clothes are torn and bloodstained, and his waxed hair and mustache are bent at odd angles. Noticing you, Stefano salutes you with his rapier. He seems genu genuinely pleased to see you. We meet again. I confess I never thought I'd be glad to see you. Unfortunately, I don't recall our conversation before. If I knew it was you, I wouldn't have come to help. Um, Sir Stefano, I barely recognized you without all the face powder. Gloat, whatever you want, I've earned it. Sir Stefano sighs. I may even owe you an apology for my behavior when we last met. don't remember. He must not have been very friendly. Despite the many flaws, your barony has some potential. Sir Stefano leans on his rapier wearily. The people here, yourself included, are passionate and ready to embrace progress. Not all countries are so open. The people of Galt might as well be a mob. Bravoy is eating itself from within by continual struggles for power in Numeria, why it's hardly a land at all. I'll show you barbarian strength. You can hear Amiri cracking your knuckles. First, I show you the floor. 
But here I see a beginning, a beginning of something greater. Your people admire you, respect you, and believe in a future with you as their leader. Not all may say the same. I will report this to my king, Iravedi. Maybe this barony is actually worthy of becoming Pidax's vassal. Vassal? Yes. Sir Stefano pauses for a moment, then looks surprised. What did you think I would offer? Do you think us equals? If your barony were even a hint of becoming a rival to Pidax, why his highness Irovedi, why he would need to deal with that threat, by vassal treaty or by steel? You are a fool to say such things out loud. Huh. See how far I can shove your powdered head up your perfumed ass. Well, let's stay stay with our nature here. It looks like we're going to throw down. Can't let you go free after a confession like that. Amiri says me first. I expected as much. Let's get it over with. Hey! All right. You will go. Have it your way. I guess it was actually our way. Let's, let's see, he just broke our barrier. Let's get that back up. Put on. We've still got protection from evil. These guys are lawful, chaotic, neutral. We, have, we don't have protection from law, but we do. Can't use that this turn. Okay. We have a guy up here? We do. Let's see if Ragongar can take care of that guy with some shocking grasp. Nice. It looks like we still have some haste going on too. Yeah, good. Does anybody need healing? I think everybody's fine. Your life ebbs low. Let's try this vital strike. Yeah. Thirty damage. All right, we've got so I wonder, this might be a good place for the arcing fire. When we've got friendlies around, we want to hit multiple enemies. Or we could just use a bone shaker. Let's just try the burning arc since we haven't used that yet. Seventeen, nine, and four. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh yeah, she has the slow too. Oh, let's go ahead and use it. That's only enemies, right? Yeah. Wretched 
Ragongar is just destroying the bodyguards. <laughs> what a waste! She can use that multiple times. I guess, like, right, she's getting three attacks just regularly. If we do this, she's just getting one. With the highest base attack bonus. Roll the weapon's damage dice for the attack twice and add the results together before adding bonuses from strength. We use this when we really need to hit something. Finish this up. You deserved it. Lindsay, you got an arrow for him? Yes. Okay. Wow, we're gonna have a lot of stuff here. Chain shirt. Let's pick out we may just want all of this. We're heading home, we can sell. Anything we don't need. Let's just pick it all up. Okay. Onwards. Back to our journey. Our journey to get Lindsay home to rest. Okay, we're heading to Bald Hilltop. Continue. Wonder if we could have nice. finished this route. Would have been a little quicker. My strength betrays me. I don't know if we're gonna make it. Just barely. Okay, let's check in here. Jaithal in fury. Jaithal is demanding an audience with Baron. Something serious happened and enraged the undead elf. Okay. So we didn't get anything new here. These are just the opportunities that we're not going to finish. We need to get back and talk to Jaithal. Okay, that's fine. Let's stop in the square, do a little bartering. I should take a look at what we picked up. There was some armor that looked interesting. Oh, and we that reminds me that Ragongar needs some medium armor, I think. is in order. Let's take a look at this. It's light armor. Chain shirt plus two. So it is better than I'm I'm curious. So he got this uh where is it? Arcane medium armor. Can cast Magus spells while wearing medium armor without incurring the normal arcane spell fa failure chance. Like any other arcane spellcaster, Magus wearing heavy armor. Okay. But that's with medium armor. Uh, he is. He is getting 
The spell fell your chance with the light armor, I presume. So we really want to get the medium armor on him. So we don't have any at the moment. Um, anybody else want this light armor? Uh, the spell failure chance is bigger with that than the, the leather armor. I don't think we want to put that on her. Anything else we picked up that we want to try to use? Got a Cloak of Resistance plus two. She could use that. She's the only one left that just has the... Oh, he has plus one. Let's put that on him. Ring of Protection plus one. I don't think we need... We can sell that. Okay, let's find our favorite local vendor up here, Asif. I guess we can sell this. Old wedding ring. So like I wonder, did this belong to those Fae that we met? The one who was like a dryad. I'm red. I'm hesitant to sell those things, just in case they're not worth anything. So maybe we just hang on to them. I don't think we need a rapier or a heavy pick or this dagger. And we don't need any of this stuff. Probably we'll use that. Wand of Bless. Could probably use that. Okay, we need to go to the storyteller for sure. And then let's look here. The stuff. Can I just drag the whole stack? I guess it's about the same as double clicking. Better pick up some rations. We should do that right while I'm thinking about it. Probably past him. There we are. Let's get back up to 12 of those. That seemed to be a no, that's not what I want to do. There. Okay, anything else here we need to sell? We have Nita's letter. A letter from Fredero Sinet. I don't think we've read that. Should we just sell this? This expensive monogrammed paper has a faint, tangy smell. Where did we pick this up? Exploring the capital. Huh. 
The lines in steady, delicate handwriting are decorated by whimsical curves. My dear Baron Deo, I write these words with a heavy heart. The reason I take up my quill today will most likely upset you. Quite recently, I heard rumor that a lost soul, once blessed with the mercy of my goddess, has found shelter in your service. I'm speaking... Oh, okay. We had something about a quest with Valerie. We need to... Sh We're supposed to show this to her, I think. I'm speaking of the daughter of one of the most worthy and generous patrons of the Order of the Eternal Rose, who once made the mistake of leaving our ranks. I am deeply convinced that now is the time for her to return to the path destined her by divine will. I am now traveling to the west, to the place that's been chosen for the new temple of Shalin that will be occupied by one of the young congregations of our church. I deemed it necessary to diverge slightly from our path with but one purpose, to arrive in your lands and collect Valerie. May this journey be a cleansing pilgrimage for Sh Shalin's chosen, whose judgment was clouded by the impulsiveness of youth. I request that you free Valerie of her vows of service to you, for fate has destined her to serve one who is above us all. Direct the girl to the trading post that's on the border between your barony and Bravois. There I will be expecting her with my comrades. I pray for your wisdom and mercy, with deep respect and regards, Frederic Sinet. This is Valerie's father. So that makes me think, like, I could have easily accidentally sold that. Like this letter from Nita. Maybe I should keep that. Because I think I, I think that Quest said we're supposed to show this letter to, to uh, Valerie. Got a couple more books here. Let's let's get one of them taken care of. The door flung open. This is the legend of the Pathfinder. Have we already read this? I don't think so. The door flung open. The three chaps sharing adventure stories fell silent. Hail, friend, said the visitor in a deep voice. Have you got a room for me, master? The bored half-elf behind the counter peered into the visitor's face and whistled. Blimey, if it isn't Gregus Jeffs. Hail, friend, let me give you a room. Your gold is no good here. No, I'll pay for it in full. That's what the society is for, helping and sharing. Gregus nods at the three chaps. So there's my replacement. Have you held the confirmation yet? We've got one last trial to go, the youngest blurted out and popped up from his chair. It's such an honor. I've read all the chronicles, all about your adventures. I heard you joined the Decemvirate, Gregus, another uttered. Oh, did you? You should cut off your ears then. They deceive you. Am I wearing a mask? You ain't. Good for you. A pathfinder with no eyes is no good. I'm not interested in politics. I'm interested in seeking. So are you going to pour me beer? And I'll tell you a couple of tales. Okay. We've got one book left. Let's take care of it. It's a long one. Imagine this. This is the notes of a traveling priest, Ilthuliac. Imagine this, a girl whose name I shall not disclose comes to town and immediately purchases the most expensive suburban villa. This newcomer spends unfathomable, unfathomable amounts on charity, even returning several tragically perished citizens to life at her own expense. She's very young, her rough speech and manners indicate that she's not of noble birth. This leaves the whole town wondering, how did this young lady come into possession of such a huge fortune, and why does she spend it so eagerly? Those secrets were revealed to me when I was invited to the mysterious girl's house to provide healing services. The young lady reluctantly displayed something she'd been hiding from everyone. Terrible acid burns. She forestalled any questions with a single word, Ilthuliac. The monstrous black dragon's name was well known in the river kingdoms. She'd lived in the region for hundreds of years, inspiring terror and emptying settlements. Many experienced dragon hunters attempted to put a stop to her, and all perished. No one knew where Ilthuliac's lair was or where she would strike next. The wounds Ilthuliac's acid breath left on my patient's body were terrible, but her soul was hurt much worse. The girl and her friends had found the lair of the dragon. They could have gathered hunters to destroy the monster, but they instead kept silent in search of profit. When the lair's mistress was absent, they would carry treasure out little by little. Ilthuliac suspected something was happening, so she set an ambush for the thieves, and they were dealt with cruelly. My patient pretended to be dead, 
surviving while the dragon devoured the bodies of her friends. She had much gold left at her disposal, but it came with the burden of memories that recalled devastated cities and countless people burned by acid. Unable to tolerate the guilt, the girl tried to atone for ill-gotten gains with good deeds. I was able to heal her physical wounds. When we parted, she told me she planned to spend the rest of her wealth organizing an expedition to Ilthuliac's lair to end the beast. I recently heard rumor that the villa has been abandoned for quite some time now. It's possible the owner left for other lands, but my heart tells me her bones lie in the lair of Ilthuliac that winged terror and plagued the river kingdoms. Okay, I wonder if this is a dragon we're going to find. Okay, we're, we've got all our books read. Whew. We got backed up on those when I was sick and couldn't read. Does this guy have anything we want to purchase? Like any medium armor? I think maybe one of the other vendors has more of that stuff. Let's take care of this deal. Plus 15 grand, we're up to 40 grand. Let's talk to Verdal. Got just some regular medium armor. Um, it's got a 5 AC light armor right now. None of that is like significantly better. It's all pretty average stuff. Uh, how about Zarcy? I think she sells like potions and stuff, scrolls. Well, I'm sure they're. We need some things, so let's... Maybe we should get rid of some of these smaller heels. Okay. I'm starting to get a little bit more of a feel for the things that we use. Um, I'm not sure though if we need to buy most of these. Although it's handy if there's something that we like to use but don't want to actually learn the spell. Okay, I, she's not the one that I was thinking of. Let's talk to Ennio and Arsino over here. Boots of Elvenkind, plus five competence bonus on mobility checks. Most of us don't even have boots. Harim's got some boots of Elvenkind. Oh, same. <laughs> Nobody else even has boots on. Um, Lindsay ends up being the one with the mobility checks. Maybe we just need to swap Harim's boots over to her. Doesn't really make sense on him. Okay, Arsenal. Okay, here we go. Except Jod, <laughs> Jod's here too, and he's cheaper. So maybe never mind. I think he has the same stuff. March on. Jod's around here somewhere. 
There we go. Hanging out with Tristan. How may I serve you, your grace? Let's get some of these. Maybe a couple lessers. Um. Protection, like protection from fire, communal, like when we're fighting like that dragon, those could, those could come in handy. Just pick up one of those. Sonic is not something we've faced yet. Electricity, communal. Protection from cold, Camino. I feel like the fire is the... I think that dragon was breathing fire at us. I will buy one. We'll have it. Okay, I know we need some of these. Let's... Maybe mainly focus on these... Your, or inflict serious wounds and then grab one of the criticals and a few of the moderates and then we're probably okay on the on these We did have a problem with poison. That's why Amiri is, uh, Lindsay is in the shape she's in. So maybe having some of these on hand would be helpful. Communal versus individual. Let's just buy a few of those. Okay. Still didn't find any armor for Ragongar. I know we could buy just some plain stuff, but it's not really that much better than what he's got on. Alright, Valerie, well let's let's talk to her about this letter. Let's save. Not sure what how this conversation is gonna go. Valerie, I received a letter from Fredero Sinet. He says I am to free you from service and return you to Shaylin. Valerie looks at you unblinking and you see her eyes darken with an anger she can barely contain. Really? May I take a look at this letter? Yes. Hmm, is that so? I see. My apologies, Deo. I seem to have become the reason for this message and highly inappropriate demands it contains. I know this person. Fredero Sinet is one of the mentors in the Order of the Eternal Rose. But this isn't her father, then. Maybe she's just like a daughter in spirit, kind of. A true paladin of Shaylin, one of those who insist they are right till the very end. He kept saying louder than anyone that Shaylin herself predetermined my fate, even when I was packing my things before I left. Looks like he never came to terms with me leaving since he found me even here. But the nerve. The mistake of leaving our ranks. Return to the path destined to her by divine will. Since when does Fredero fancy himself the personal harbinger of his precious Shaylin? Valerie, her face scarlet red, doesn't, notice, doesn't seem to notice the letter crumpling in her hand. Enough. We must put an end to this. If paladins of the Order of the Eternal Rose require another refusal, they shall get it. I'm going to the trading post with you to meet Fredero. I serve you. It's as simple as that. It's my decision, and I'm not going to change it just because someone from my past thinks otherwise. Do you know we could just ignore this letter, right? Valerie shakes her head. We can't. 
Fredero Sinet may be in the wrong, but that's no reason to show myself and you as uncultured barbarians. At least he didn't appear unannounced at court with his demands. I must at least give him credit for this superficial politeness. Okay, we'll have to visit Oleg and Svetlana. Okay, I thought we'd been over some of this stuff. So we, we need to take her to Oleg's. So at some point here soon, I'm probably going to need to level up some of the people that we haven't been using. Or at least her, if we take her out with us. Here's Jethal. And Aneo. Aneo, a half-elf merchant. They must be in conflict. <laughs> Aneo, a half-elf merchant who recently appeared in the capital, falls to the floor in front of you. Jethal stands beside him, looking quite unlike her normal self. Uh, usually cold and stiff, the face of the undead elf now burns with rage. Despite his nearness to his furious undead captor, Aneo looks concerned but unafraid. If you allow me to speak, I can explain everything. I hope you can, Half-Blood. Otherwise, have I told you the sad story of my death? It is sad, most of all, because I do not remember how my life ended. I wandered, exhausted, through the wastelands, beyond the borders of Kyonin, until I could barely see my path. I stopped to rest, or perhaps I lost consciousness. When I came to my senses, I heard the call of my goddess, returning me from the dead. Was it poison, magic, illness? Whatever stole my life away, it left no trace. I thought this mystery would haunt me forever, but then I entered the shop of this half-blood, seeking some reminder of Kyanin, and what did I discover there? My very own dagger. Jethel shows you an elven-crafted dagger with a chipped blade and empty sockets where once gemstones adorned the handle. This dagger disappeared the same night I was taken by death. How could this half-blood have ob obtained it? Let him speak, Jethel. Anger will not help us learn the truth. That is why, respecting your authority, I have brought this pathetic huckster here, rather than getting the truth out of him by my own methods. Received Jethel's old dagger. The half-elf rises to his feet and sighs, putting his clothes in order. Thank you for allowing me to speak, Your Grace. The story is not very exciting, certainly not as, not as exciting as my tale of the drunken regatta within the eye of... A bendigo. Yesterday, north of the city, I stumbled upon a dead boar. There was no one around, but the dagger was protruding from the miserable beast's neck. I don't know why the owner would have left it in the carcass. Perhaps the beast escaped from the hunter, taking along the weapon that had injured it. So, I inadvertently decided to keep the item I'd found, thinking, thanking my luck and never suspecting the price I'd pay for it. Where exactly did you find this carcass and dagger? In the vicinity of the old sycamore. Of course, I'm sure you know where that tree grows. Yeah, we've been there. I found the boar to the west of the sycamore in the direction of the Thorn River. Aeneo, you face serious accusations. Are you sure you can say nothing more in your defense? I would be glad if I could, but alas, the bright yellow-green eyes of the half-elf are calm. The dead boar is my only witness, but I believe in your justice, Baron. I have faith that you will investigate my story and sort everything out. We'll investigate this matter further. Let's start by checking Enio's story and seek out this unfortunate boar. Jethel bows gracefully. I am grateful. It is... It's important to me, and you, Half-Blood, should pray for our success. If you are lying, I shall find a surer way to get the truth from you. Okay, well, that sounds like something we can definitely check on. Investigate my death. Anybody else? 
so I don't forget. Let's go take care of our transaction with the storyteller. 1500 for the Dryad tokens, 300 for the dog tag. And we need more of those. More of those. Okay. All right. Let's save and then check in at our table. Arrest is in order. Okay, we did that. We are very close to the end of the month. That's a new one. Some believe that mis the misfortune that plagued the village on the marches was the result of a curse. It might be worth looking into. Okay. Well, let's take a break and go rest, and maybe by then it'll be next month. Resting would be nice, don't you think? Okay. One Lamashan. Oh, we were in the ninth month. This is the tenth month. I misread my Roman numerals. We've got a new opportunity. Oh, we failed this opportunity. And we failed this opportunity. He's about done with that. We need a Mary or Tristian for this one. Let's... I think we're still waiting to rank up our economy. No, we did that. Okay. We need to uh, rank up military. We need a Mary for that. She's still got a while. Let's go ahead and pass time though, so maybe we can get Jubilast going on something else. Triumph. Relying on the services of mercenaries, the treasurer managed to put an end to the bandit attacks. The roads are safer for peasants and merchants alike. Regional markets and fairs attract more people than ever. Got some build points and economy plus five. So let's take a look. Let's get out of here so this will reset. Okay, we can actually do some of these if we want to. Then Jubilast to pillage the Temple of the Elk. I haven't done any of these projects yet. Spreading the Stag God's Faith. Yeah. This one, this might be what we want to do. Yeah. Get that 500 build points from Restov. What was the other one? Trade agreement with Sertova. We need a lot more build points to do this. Okay. Yeah, let's get him in here. And get this going. Okay, now let's just check out our two villages here.
We've built everything we can. So we need what we need to figure out is how we get another region incorporated. So I haven't seen any information on how to do that. We're working on the piers. Okay. I think that's all we can do here right now. So, I think the next will be to head back out. Um, take a look at loadouts. I think we're pretty decent on things. We wasted that enhancement oil. We didn't really need it for that tree. She still has some constitution damage. Okay, that took care of that. What else could she put on? Oh, this bold strength. Amiri can maybe use that at some point. Lindsay can't use a lot of these. Maybe just put an extra healing spell on her. Aram, let's put on one of these big ones for Jethal. So the only thing we didn't really take care of is better armor for him, but I'm sure we'll eventually we'll find that. And a lot of, like, none of our people are fully equipped. I guess we could buy that stuff, but feels like we'll probably find some things eventually. Jethel, oh, that's what we need to go buy, is some uh, Inflict Wounds potions. You can put a fireball scroll on and this wand of burning arc. Got a lot of the wands going. Okay. So we need to go shop for inflict wounds potions. Probably is back to Hasif. Has I believe. Pretty sure he's the one with the potions. He does have this this medium armor. We could get that for Ragongar. Let's not get distracted here. Does he have potions? 
Here we go. Inflict serious wounds. Yeah. Let's buy several of those. Since we're here, let's buy this medium armor. It's not anything special, but... Put it on and see if we notice a difference in how much he gets hit or if he has more trouble landing his spells. We'll keep this handy for now. Okay, and then Jethal. Equip some of those. All right. No Let's, we'll get down here to the entrance or the exit, as the case may be. And we'll finish up there. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I know this was another like kind of inventory management, reading, taking care of kingdom business, but that's part of the game. Thanks for being here and watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.